hello, everybody, and welcome to another Florida Friendly Landscaping Educational Program. This morning, I have my co-host, Dr. William Lester. Good morning, Bill. How are you? Good morning, Lily. How are you? I'm doing just great. Um, Bill and I got together today. This is a very um, specific class that we're teaching, very specific to Hernando County, but there are um, fertilizer ordinances pretty much all over the state, wouldn't you say, Bill? In many counties, I'm not sure exactly how many have one right now, but a lot of counties do have some type of ordinance. They do. So you, you still have something to learn from us as to why there are so many fertilizer ordinances, but you still need to check specifically with your county for their specific rules. And our rules have recently changed. So that is why Bill and I thought it's we wanted to take this opportunity to explain the new rules and explain what you can do, <laughs> you know, knowing the new rules, what you can do with that information. I am Lily Browning. I am the Florida Friendly Landscaping Program Coordinator here in Hernando County. I work for Hernando County Utilities. A good email to start using um, to reach Florida Friendly Landscaping is this long email, but you only need to put it in at once, put it in once. It should auto-populate after that. Hernando County FFL, Hernando County all spelled out, Hernando County FFL at HernandoCounty.us. Dr. Lester has a much easier email, so send all the questions, especially the really hard ones, to wlester at ufl for University of Florida dot edu because he educates you. These are the nine principles of Florida friendly landscaping. Today, we're going to cover pretty exclusively, well, uh, number three, fertilize appropriately. I can't get my circle. Oh, well, there's my circle. <laughs> um, fertilize appropriately within the rules of the ordinance. But you know what? Fertilizing appropriately, what it works towards is numbers eight and nine, reducing stormwater runoff. Um, we don't want that fertilizer in the stormwater runoff. And those two things work together to protect the waterfront. We have somebody we need to let in. There we go. So the first question for Hernando County or any county is why is there a fertilizer ordinance? Why are we, you know, up in people's lawns business, <laughs> you know, as, you know, making these fertilizer ordinances? What, what, why? Well, Hernando County is in the heart of the largest concentration of springs in the world. Did you know that, Dr. Lester? Yes, I did. Yes. All up and down the uh, western coast of Florida. So springs that probably most people don't see. They see Wikiwachi Springs. They see, you know, many of the others. You may even see this one, which is Eagle's Nest. That's what I took a picture of. If you happen um, to go to that Enjoy Distillery <laughs> through the woods there, you might have... Uh, finished taking the road, which ends in this Eagle's Nest Spring, where there are a lot of divers that go into the spring. There's a lesser used one, except by divers, around the same area, Buford Springs. There's so many springs. There's um, some in, in the Boy Scout Ranch, and they're all, you know, even outside of our county, so many springs. I'm thinking somewhere in my mind, I have like 21 spring sheds in Hernando County. So studies by the Southwest Florida Water Management District have shown that inorganic nitrogen levels in local springs have doubled since the 1920s. So what else has probably more than doubled since the 1920s around here? Our population. Our population certainly has, yes. And studies have documented the primary contributor of nitrogen is likely to be applied landscape fertilizers. Is it the only contributor? No. Um, 
old septic tanks have shown to be, you know, a pretty good contributor of uh, nitrogen into our springs. And we have a primary focus area focused around that Boy Scout Ranch kind of area where we have a lot of springs where Hernando County Utilities is um, undergoing a septic to sewer program to help mitigate that. Don't worry if you have not already gotten a letter, then you know, don't worry about it. If, you, if you're affected by that, you, you know that you are. But you know, when, when we talk about pollution, we talk about two different major categories. Point source means we know where it came from or non-point source. Non-point source is the everyday activities of everyday people. So many different places that we can't po possibly pinpoint where it all comes from. But we do know it's the everyday activities of people fertilizing their urban lawns really does build up the amount of nitrates entering our waterways. That is why, you know, we, many counties in Florida to protect, Florida is an, an, and it's a gorgeous state with all these beautiful springs. We want to keep it that way. We want to keep it that way for the wildlife, for ourselves, for tourism dollars, you know, economic reasons, for crops, for many reasons. And so let's start to say, we had a um, fertilizer ordinance since I would say, was it 2014, Dr. Lester, when the first one came out? Yes, I think it was passed in 2013, but it went into effect 2014. Okay. So we had one in effect for that long. And as of June 23rd, I'm sorry, May 23rd, 2023, the Hernando County Board of County Commissioners passed revisions to our current ordinance, then ordinance, and that took effect immediately. So these are in effect right now. So in the old ordinance, it was you weren't allowed to apply fertilizer to urban lawns. When we're talking about applying fertilizer, let's just, just put an addendum right now. We're talking about urban lawns. We're not talking about fertilizing vegetable gardens or citrus trees, palm trees, things such as that, correct, Dr. Lester? That's correct. You could still fertilize those individual plants. This is for... Um, large scale, I guess, um, long for lawns. For lawns. Mm -hmm. So turf fertilizer, turf fertilizer containing nitrogen. You see, I made turf and nitrogen yellow here. So that those are the two things that are standing out. Turf fertilizer containing nitrogen is not allowed to be applied. Used to be January 1st through March 31st. Those dates have changed to December 15th to March 15th. I think that was done so that you could start a little earlier in the spring, probably. And, but wait, there's more. We have added dates, June 1st through September 30th. I think everyone pretty much knows why those dates were added and why would that be Dr. Lister? That's to prevent fertilizer runoff during the summer when we're getting a lot of rain and very heavy rains. Mm -hmm. And a number of other counties all around Hernando County have adopted them over the years. Right. So you'll, not, hear, you'll hear about it. You'll hear about it on the Tampa News every year. You know, it's summer. Correct. I mean, Pinellas, Hillsborough County, you know, it's the, the fertilizer ban time. Now, that, that was winter months. How do you feel about not fertilizing during those winter months? That shouldn't be a problem to anybody because there's no point fertilizing during the winter because your grass is not actually growing. Therefore, your grass isn't taking up the fertilizer. So then, therefore, you're kind of wasting your time and your money by applying it. Okay. Let's see what else changed. Um, Ah, here's another thing that changed. There's an expanded no chemical zone, no fertilizer zone um, near waterways. 
So fertilizers should not, it says cannot, I mean, should not by, by the ordinance are not allowed to be spread within 25 feet of wetlands or surface water. That has expanded from 10 feet. In the um, older ordinance, it was 10 feet. Now it's 25 feet. So, you know, if you are on the coast or on a beautiful river like this and you say, that's my yard, the 25 feet, Dr. Lester is going to guide you um, further on in this program of how you can, you know, have a lawn without necessarily always applying these harsh chemicals like nitrogen and phosphorus. This is probably the biggest change aside from adding more months um, to the fertilizer ordinance. In the old one, commercial applicators were exempt from this as long as they had a fertilizer, a state fertilizer license um, that's again, you know, given to them by the green industry's best management practices state license and that they applied slow release only. In the new ordinance, which took effect May 23rd, commercial applicators are not exempt from this ordinance. They have to follow the same rules as homeowners. Dr. Lester will guide you. <laughs> you're, you know, your business is not over. <laughs> the way I look at it is it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to offer your customers you know, a, a niche, you know, saying I am environmentally friendly. I'm going to show you how to have a nice lawn without relying on nitrogen all the time. And Dr. Lester is around to help you with that. The other, um, we still can't ban stores from selling it. We, we don't have the time for the litigious process <laughs> that it would take to be able to do that. But we have added that businesses in Hernando County that sell fertilizer will be required to post county provided signage stating the restrictions. And some of the um, garden centers have already, you know, voluntarily been cooperating in those winter months by putting it way up out of the way, you know, so people couldn't just grab it. But the county, um, will be, it hasn't happened yet, don't go look for those signs yet, you know, the wheels of government, but <laughs> the county will be providing signage that'll tell you, you know, this fertilizer, we're under a fertilizer ban for turf grass during this period of time. So just to go over that quickly again, it was revised on May 23rd, 2023 by a unanimous vote of the Hernando County Board of County Commissioners. It took effect right then. It's in effect right now. The changes are that the dates, so you cannot apply from December 15th to March 15th. March 15th, you can do a spring application if you wish. Then June 1st through September 30th, again, there's a blackout phase. And then um, October 1st, till December 14th. I wouldn't do it that late, but you're allowed to, but Dr. Lester would probably recommend like October 15th or so do a fall application if you need it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Commercial applicators are not exempt from this ordinance. The buffer zone by a wetland or a body of water is 25 feet now, not 10. And businesses that sell will be required to have signage provided by Hernando County. Here are um, the other general rules that remained from the former um, ordinance. You know, these are still in effect. These did not change, but they are still in effect. Um, you should not fertilize when the National Weather Service issues hurricane. Should be thinking about other stuff if, <laughs> if they've issued a hurricane or a tropical storm watch, or if heavy rain is expected. So really, if you really think about this, this rule was always in there, if heavy rain is expected. Now we've specified June 1st 
after September 30th, but it was kind of covered in that line right there if heavy rain is expected because it's always expected in the summer. So, you know, it's not really that um, onerous. It was already sort of there. Also, um, you're not in the ordinance, you're not allowed to fertilize prior to seeding or sodding a site or for 30 days after. Can you explain why that is in there, Dr. Lester? Sure, because if you put down fertilizer before you put down grass seed, which isn't done very often in Florida, but can be done, or sodding, which is done much more often, all that fertilizer will be lost. Because sod, when you first put it down, has a very, very small root system. It's not gonna take the fertilizer up that you put down right before you put the sod down. Um, all the fertilizer is going to leach through the soil or wash away. And you don't have to worry because when they grow sod at the sod farm, they fertilize it plenty. So your brand new lawn can get by just fine for at least several months before it needs any kind of fertilizer. So it's just going to run off and or leach, not, you know, not, not help your new sod at all. Yeah, it won't go into the new grass no matter what you do. And if you do it with seed, you'll fertilize all the wonderful weeds that'll come up. <laughs> yes, you'll get a beautiful crop of weeds coming up along with your new grass that you just put seed down. That's why I said not many people do it because it's very, very difficult here in Central Florida. Also, and this I think is pretty much uh, law everywhere <laughs> in, in many municipalities. Um, no cut plant material may be deposited in the street in storm drains or in bodies of water. Many reasons for this. Um, I work for Hernando County Utilities, you know, and um, across the street is our maintenance operation on Wiscon. And, you know, people who work for the sewers there, you know, it, it causes backups, putting vegetation down in our sewers. And that is no fun for anybody. <laughs> Not to mention that the grass, um, you know, it's it's containing nitrogen. So you're just adding more nitrogen or whatever chemicals happen to be on that grass, you know, as it goes into the storm, um, you know, into the storm drains through the waterways into our bodies of water. So, and another reason is it's unattractive. It doesn't make your neighborhood look great. And that is why you will see um, your Mo Blow and Go guys um, blowing that back into the lawn. That is what they're supposed to be doing by law. And it just kind of adds more nitrogen back to the lawn where it belongs. Also talk to any um, motorcyclist. <laughs> very, very, very dangerous to have these grass cuttings in the street. Um, it you know causes their tires to slip and causes accidents. So, you know, there are many reasons to not just have that lying around. Also, you must clean up fertilizer that falls on impervious surfaces by replacing it back into the original container or moving it back onto the lawn. What you are not to do is hose it. <laughs> do not hose it down your driveway. Don't hose it off your patio. Don't hose it um, down the street. You're to sweep it up you know, find some other way of dryly cleaning it up. Put it back in the bag to reuse it or just sprinkle it back and, you know, into your lawn. So those are the rules. <laughs> I have told you the rules. So now what? So that's why I invited our resident turf expert. Dr. Lester from the University of Florida, Hernando County Extension, to tell us what to do. Now, what do we do with these new rules? Take it away, Dr. Lester. Okay, great. Thank you. So some of you might be wondering at this point, oh my gosh, how is my lawn going to get by during the summer if I can't fertilize it? Maybe you've just been in the habit of fertilizing multiple times every year and you think that your lawn has to be fertilized every month or two year round, otherwise it's gonna die, it's gonna disappear, some, some terrible thing's gonna to happen to it. 
that's not true. You really don't have to worry about that. A lot of times we tell people that if you're in the habit of fertilizing your lawn a lot and you still have any kind of lawn issues, your issue is probably not a lack of fertilizer. You have some other kind of issue. So cultural practices are very, very important with whatever type of turf grass you're trying to grow. Primarily here in Central Florida, the two main lawns would be St. Augustine and Bahia. Uh, very important that you mow them at the correct height. St. Augustine grass needs to be cut three and a half to four inches high. Four inches is better. Bahia should be cut at the same height also, very, very tall. If you cut your grass short, you're going to have a lot more problems with weeds, diseases, other problems, and you might think your problem is lack of fertilizer, when in reality, you're, the heart of your problem is you're not managing or mowing your lawn correctly. Other things that play into this is proper irrigation. Uh, during the summer, when we get a lot of rain, shut your irrigation systems off. And then if we have a dry week and you need to water that week, go in there and switch it to run on your day at the proper time. If you're not sure what your day to irrigate is, ask Lily at the very end here and she can help you figure that out. But shut the water off during the summer because it is possible to give turf grass too much water. You know, we're growing St. Augustine or Bahia grass here. We're not trying to grow rice. You don't need 10 inches of water a week for your lawn to look good. Disease control is something that a lot of people don't think about. There are several different diseases that can affect uh, turf grass. Pest control, which would be primarily insects. Weed control, you can kind of draw a line from weed control back to mowing. Because if you mow your grass at the correct height, if you mow it really tall, you will have far fewer problems with weeds. If you cut your grass too short, you're gonna have a lot of weeds. And now you're trying to control those weeds through using an herbicide or weed killer or fertilizing work. So we want everybody to fertilize appropriately and we're gonna give some recommendations before the end here. Next slide. So mowing, that's probably the most important cultural practice in lawn health from a uh, plant health perspective, something that a lot of people really don't think about. They just assume, well, whatever height I have my mower set at, or my service, whatever height they're cutting it at, must be correct, right? Not necessarily. Uh, very important that you use some common sense and pick up sticks and stones and other things like that. If you run over them with a the mower, they become missiles and they go flying all over and hit a car or window or something. Mow at the highest recommended height for the type of grass you have. Like I said, we have St. Augustine here. So ideally that's gonna be four inches. Bahia grass, ideally four inches. Zoysia grass is a totally different type of turf grass. That naturally should be cut much shorter, but very few people here in Hernando County have zoysia. Sand heat grass is grown up in North Florida. We have very, very little of it here in Central Florida. We're a little bit too far south for it to do well. Bermuda grass is what they grow at a golf course on the putting green. Very few people have that for uh, a home landscape lawn. If your grass gets away from you and grows a little bit too tall, don't go out there and all at once grind it back down to the correct height. You don't wanna cut off more than one third of a leaf blade at any time. So letting your grass get really tall, cutting it back really short is terribly stressful to it on a, per, a plant health perspective. And ideally go ahead and leave the grass clippings. Don't think that you have to bag them here in Florida, like maybe you did up north. When you leave the grass clippings down in your, and they return a lot of nitrogen to the lawn so that you have to fertilize less often. So with the closed seasons that we have here now in Hernando County, it's even more important to recycle that nitrogen instead of bagging it and putting it in a trash bag out by the curb to be picked up. Next slide. So the reason why you want to cut, another good reason why you want to cut that grass high is because grass kind of mirrors itself between the above ground part and the below ground part. The taller you maintain your grass week in and week out, the deeper the roots are going to go. The shorter you cut your grass, the shorter the roots are. Short roots, 
means your grass is going to dry out faster. It's going to look like it needs to be watered more often. It's going to be more difficult for it to take up the nutrients that are in the soil to begin with. And it's just not a really good situation. So another benefit of cutting your grass, keeping your grass high, is you will have deeper roots to be able to capture the water and nutrients that are there a little bit deeper in the soil. Next slide. So irrigation, some basic irrigation rules for when you do need to irrigate. You wanna do fewer but longer irrigation events. Don't plan on going out there watering it a little bit every day because number one, that's terrible for your lawn. Number two, you can get a ticket for that because we do have watering restrictions in effect here in Hernando County that are dictated by the last number in your house's address. So that tells you what day of the week you're allowed to water and you can only do so once a week. So you're not allowed to do it every day here. You wouldn't want to do that every day, even if you could. Every time you water, you should aim to apply about a half to three quarters of an inch of water. And that is gonna be most of the water that your lawn needs to get by for the whole week. And then try not to water in the middle of the night or in the evenings, because having your entire landscape, your lawn, your bushes, your flowers, every, your hedges wet, all night long encourages a lot of disease problems. It's best to try to water as close to dawn as you can, because that way you water everything, your, your last zone is all done by 8 a.m., which is when you're supposed to cease irrigating in the morning, you're not allowed to water after 8 a.m., and the sun's gonna come up, dry off the leaves, and everything should be fine. So try to avoid watering uh, in the evening. Next slide. So, like I mentioned here in Central Florida, we do have some turf grass diseases. The one that we encounter most often is something that's called take all root rot. Technically, all turf grasses can harbor this disease, but the one turf grass that we see this affecting most often is going to be St. Augustine grass. This disease can be controlled to a certain extent, can be managed, but there's nothing you could do to make it magically disappear from your yard completely. It's always gonna be there. So this is something that you're gonna to have to manage. Any kind of stress on your lawn is gonna cause an outbreak of this disease and it can spread very quickly. You'll start with a dead spot or a couple of dead spots. It spreads and spreads. It could kill an entire lawn to the point where you're gonna to have to replace the lawn. We see that very, very frequently. So some of the things that can stress out your lawn is the mowing height. That's why it's so important to cut your grass high. Fertilization, too much fertilizing really accentuates this disease to begin with. So for anybody who has been fertilizing over the years a lot, you may be causing problems by doing that. And also irrigation, too much water or too little water at a time of year where it's still warm and sunny and your grass is trying to grow can make this disease a lot of, a lot worse also. And take all root rot sometimes occurs in a complex with nematode populations, which just kind of adds to your lawn's misery and makes the situation even worse. Next slide. Chinch bugs. I'm sure anybody watching this who has a St. Augustine lawn has heard of chinch bugs. And maybe you've been told before that your lawn has chinch bugs. Uh, chinch bugs are very common. Most St. Augustine lawns, we can find them out there by late summer. What happens is your grass uh, stops growing, the grass blades turn yellow, then they turn brown, and you have patches of dead grass. So you can see from this picture here, I see patches of dead grass. If you sent me a picture of a lawn with take all root rot, you would see the exact same thing, patches of dead grass. You can't tell from just looking at it or a picture what the problem is. We would have to look at a sample and look a little bit closer. Chinch bugs, like the picture on the left and the right here, are very distinctive. If we look at your grass under a microscope, we know what chinch bugs look like. If we look at your grass under a microscope and it has take all root rot, we can actually see that also and see if that is the problem. Next slide. 
So managing weeds and turf grass. It's really like lots and lots of water, lots and lots of fertilizer. They like bare spots in your yard. If you have a spot in your yard that's completely bare, it won't be for long. Something will grow there, and it's probably going to be a weed before it's the type of turf grass that you're wanting to grow. A lot of times, grass that's cut too short or you're cutting off too much at one time is going to be really, really beneficial to the weeds. With St. Augustine grass, if you are able to mow it really high, four inches or higher, I've seen lawns that are maintained that high, and they tend to be really, really thick and really healthy, and they have basically little or no weeds. So the taller grass will help shade out a lot of those weeds, and the healthy grass is going to be thicker and not give weeds room to move in and take over. So cutting height really, really helps when you're trying to manage your weeds. Also weeds in your flower beds and everywhere else, if you have a lot of bare dirt with little or no mulch, perfect place to grow a weed. And what makes weeds worse is a lack of scouting either by you or by your service. So a lot of times catching weeds very, very early makes them a lot easier to be able to control. Um, a good example is Southern Sandspur. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with Sandspur. It's a weed, it's a warm season weed. It sprouts in the spring, grows all summer long. Late in the summer, it gets tiny flowers that you're never really even gonna notice and makes those little sharp spurs that you step on in your bare feet or maybe your dogs step on and they hurt really bad. The time to control them isn't when the sand spurs are out in August and September. Time to control them is go all the way back to about February when they're first germinating. That's when you need to control them when they haven't even germinated or come up yet. So scouting your yard, keeping on top of what's going on, goes a long ways towards being successful with managing weeds. Waiting until weeds totally take over might be a little bit late to get a really good handle on that. Next slide. So very important that you fertilize appropriately within the new fertilizer ordinance here in Hernando County. So you need to always have a reason why you're fertilizing. You need to look and say, does my lawn need to be fertilized at this time? Is it missing any nutrients? Does it need any nutrients? Is it visibly not doing what I want it to do because of a lack of nutrients? Um, getting a soil test done can help. It'll tell you your soil's pH, which is very important for a Bahia lawn. It tells you the levels of phosphorus and potassium to let you know if you need them at all, or maybe not. Many soils here in Central Florida already have adequate amounts of phosphorus and potassium so that you never have to add them. You have to ask, is it being mowed at the proper height? So are we maintaining basically a healthy lawn? And is it receiving the proper amount of irrigation? Not too much, but not too little also. So these are things you need to ask yourself before you go out there during a time of year when you're allowed to fertilize before you fertilize, because you may not need to even if you're allowed to do so at that time. Next slide. So some of the important elements that are required by turf grass, all different plants are different. Some plants are very, very fussy with their micronutrients. Some good examples are palm trees and citrus trees. They're very fussy when it comes to nutrients. Turf grass, not very fussy. It needs nitrogen, it needs phosphorus, but not that much for an established lawn that's actively growing. And it needs potassium, which a lot of soils in Florida are deficient in, but potassium is not a pollutant. So we're not really worried about potassium ending up in a waterway. Obviously you don't wanna go dump a bag of it into your local stream or pond, but it's not really a major concern. Couple micronutrients that turf grass needs, iron can benefit it, manganese to a certain extent, but turf grass really isn't all that fussy with the nutrients that it needs to begin with. Next slide. So some of the turf grass uh, fertilizer best management practices, and a lot of these kind of tie into different components that are written into the fertilizer ordinance. 
don't let the fertilizer remain on impervious surfaces. So don't, when you do fertilize your lawn, don't get it all over your driveway or sidewalk. When it gets wet, it stains. So some of the nutrients in it will actually make little colored dots on your sidewalk that you'll never get out. So go ahead and sweep it up or blow it back into your lawn. Very important, you maintain a buffer around any kind of water body. So this is a spring, a lake, a river, a retention pond if you live in a subdivision, any body of water, you have to keep 25 feet back with the fertilizer. Always apply the correct amount of fertilizer, and this is going to be on the label of the bag of fertilizer that you purchased. Very important to read that label. Uh, know your soil's pH and the nutrient concentrations that the good Lord blessed you with in your soil naturally. Obviously, if you get a soil test done, you have plenty of phosphorus and plenty of potassium. You don't need to add that. All you may need to add would be nitrogen. Always go low on phosphorus. Lawns do not need a lot of it. And nowadays, you can purchase fer fertilizers with zero phosphorus in, them, in it. That is going to be the middle number out of the three numbers. So it would be a something, zero, something that would contain no phosphorus. Only fertilize when the turf is actively growing in the spring and fall. And those are the only two open periods of time when you can fertilize now in the spring and the fall. And you may need to irrigate fertilizer with about a quarter inch of water after you put it down. That information is going to be on the bag of fertilizer that you purchase because a lot of fertilizer, because of the type of nitrogen that's in it, if you put it down on your lawn and you just leave it, it's not really an issue of burning the grass. The fertilizer is going to volatilize and go off into the atmosphere. And now you pay for fertilizer it's not going into your grass's roots, it's just going back in the atmosphere and you didn't really make a wise decision. So that information will be on the label of the fertilizer that you purchase, but you have to remember something else when it comes to irrigating whatever day you happen to put down the fertilizer and Lily can help with that. Okay, if um, you have a company come to your home, and you know, apply some sort of fertilizer, and it they tell you it needs to be watered in. I get phone calls about this quite often. Um, within the uh, Hernando County watering rules in the Muni Code, it says that if you have if you're paying a company to to put it down, they are to provide a sign out in your lawn that they have applied a treatment and they're to put that day's date on it you are allowed to water it in no matter what day it is you know as long as your company has put that sign out and, and dated it for that day it is best probably i think you have a period of time you don't have to water it in instantaneously so it mm. would be best to wait till after six you know on that day that they apply it and water it in then you are clear within the watering rules as long as you have the sign from that company if you as a homeowner are fertilizing your lawn yourself not paying a company you are doing it then you need to plan to do that on your watering day you won't um, get any exemptions you know if you're doing it yourself so do it yourself do it on your watering day have some a company do it make sure there's a sign out and you're okay to water it in following the directions yes and don't think that you have to like three minutes after you put the fertilizer down run off and immediately start the irrigation it's within a couple of hours within a reasonable period of time mm -hmm. it's just fertilizer certain types of nitrogen fertilizer if they lay on the surface of the soil they will start to break down and that that nitrogen will be lost to the atmosphere and it won't, what you're doing by applying a quarter inch of water is just making it dissolve and go down as deep as the roots. And a quarter inch, just a little bit, is perfect for that. Next slide. So here's a picture that uh, Lily provided of a lawn right here in Fernando County. And I believe that they really don't fertilize. They might fertilize lightly in the spring. And yeah. this is St. Augustine grass, mm -hmm. and it's fairly shady. And that, from the picture, is a beautiful lawn. 
I think any one of us would be happy with a lawn that looked like that. Yes, I took this picture just the other day. There's no irrigation system in this yard. And I think they might every so often, you know, spread some fertilizer down. Now this is a very, very large yard. It's two and a half acres. Does all of the two and a half acres look like this? No, <laughs> but you know, good portions of it do. If I got closer, you'd see some weeds, mm -hmm. no big deal. But this goes back to right plant, right place. This, as you can see, is some shade. You wouldn't want it shadier than this, or you would not have, you know, this good looking of a St. Augustine lawn. Um, you wouldn't have a good looking Bahia grass lawn in, in this kind of shade. Um, and it's a wet area of town. So that really goes back to right plant, right place. There's There are some like uh, creeks and things that go through this neighborhood in, in Brooksville. It's inland, you know, it's, it's uh, north of downtown, north of the courthouse in a rather wet location. So at night, oh, the frogs. <laughs> so it is very, um, just goes back to right plant, right place. This is why Florida Friendly Landscaping will not come out and say St. Augustine grass is not Florida friendly. Goes to right plant, right place. The problem is when you're trying to force it <laughs> in places where it is not happy to grow. And if you're not managing it correctly to kind Absolutely. of- Absolutely. This is mode high. This is mode, you know, pretty high too. Mm -hmm. So if you're asking, well, what can I apply to my lawn between June 1st and September 30th, which we are in right now, um, any fertilizer that does not contain nitrogen or phosphorus, you're going to base that on a soil test. Um, you can apply iron, and iron, it's perfectly fine to apply iron uh, in, in accordance with the fertilizer ordinance. It can help to green up your lawn a little bit. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it helps a lot, and it never hurts. So you may want to try that if your lawn isn't looking quite as green as what you think it should. Potassium, which in a fertilizer is that third number, you can get sources of just potassium. It's going to be a zero, zero, 30 or zero, zero something. Um, that's okay to put down. Potassium improves the overall uh, turf grass health. That's what a lot of people will put down in the fall to help make your lawn a little healthier and sturdier for the coming winter. And you can always put down compost products. These are gonna be things like uh, Command. Some commercial services can provide that. You can go to your box store or a uh, lawn and garden center, get black cow, bagged compost, different products like that. If you sprinkle them very, very lightly over your lawn. They'll kind of get watered in. What they do is they help to build up the soil, make the soil healthier. The soil is going to hold water better, going to help, help hold nutrients better. And I've done that on St. Augustine lawns. And you will, you will probably see a very, very good result. You'll actually see an improvement in your lawn. So don't think that you have to add an actual turf fertilizer to see it turn green, look healthier, look happier, look better. A lot of times compost, and there's been a lot of research done on this about benefits of compost with building up whatever soil you might naturally have. If you live in a um, subdivision or um, a neighborhood with the homeowners association, a lot of times when those homes were built, they brought in fill dirt to make your yard out of. And the fill dirt may not be the best. It may be pure sand. Compost really, really, if you haven't tried it before, give it a shot. I think you might be very impressed and happy with the results that you see. Next slide. You can consider a freedom lawn. That's what I have. That's what Lily had. Um, that's where it is not a perfect pure stand of either St. Augustine or Bahia. My lawn is maybe. Depends on the time of year, 50 to 75% Bahia. The rest is whatever grows there. Yes, I have a lot of weeds. 
I have native plants out there also. I have little plants and ground covers that naturally attract uh, butterflies. They're a host source for their caterpillars. So I'm very happy with my lawn. I looked out there this morning and with all the rain that we've been getting, my bahia component is growing like crazy. I'm going to have to get out there and cut the grass over the next few days if I could beat the rain long enough to be able to do that. So if you don't live in an HOA or a subdivision where you're required to have a perfect looking stand of St. Augustine or Bahia or whatever type of lawn you have, consider a freedom lawn. It generally is the right lawn in the right place because whatever grows in my yard grows. I'm not trying to force something to grow that's not gonna do well in my natural soil. I do allow weeds, I get plenty. My turf grass during the summer tends to dominate and push the weeds out, but I always have some weeds. I'm okay with that, doesn't bother me. Mine survives on natural rainfall. I've never watered and we've been here for six years, I think, never watered. I generally don't let it get too tall. I go out there and try to cut it on a regular basis, but I cut it hot. I set my mower ideally on the highest setting because that makes for even, even healthier behavior and weeds, believe it or not. I've never fertilized my lawn, never had a reason to put down any chemicals. So, so that's just me. That might not be you, but if you can, you might want to consider this because it's a lot less expensive, lower maintenance, much, much, much easier to take care of. A lot of benefits. If you do live in a homeowners association or subdivision, Try to reduce the amount of lawn area you have, especially if your lawn is giving you problems, like you're having to replace it, spend a lot of money, the company is coming out and spraying, they spray all kinds of different things. Try to reduce the, the number of square feet of lawn you have, because that's less problem area that you have to manage and deal with. Less lawn equals less water usage also. Uh, you know, 60% of the water that Hernando County Utilities Department sends out, that comes out of the ground, is clean, sent out in a great big pipe, or pipes, I guess. To customers, 60% of that is used out in people's yards, which is a lot. So consider more plant beds, less lawns. You don't have to create flower beds that are really, really high maintenance. Lily and Florida Friendly Landscaping can give you a lot of suggestions for native plants, low maintenance plants, things that you kind of plant and forget it, they take care of themselves. In the picture here, most of this is pretty low maintenance. You're not pruning or weeding or fussing with it a lot. So it can really, really help to reduce the square footage of lawn that you have. Next slide. So if you still have questions or problems, we do have master gardeners that help at our office. And here is our address and our phone number. And I'm sure that my email is gonna show up once again at the very end here. We can give you information on how to get a soil test done and give you the um, uh, little paper bag to put the sample in and the form to fill out. We can diagnose diseases. We can give weed and insect pest control. You see here our Master Gardener, Bernie, who is there every Thursday. So Thursday is a great day to either call or come by. We have a microscope. So we can look at those little things like chinch bugs. A chinch bug is only about the size of a grain of pepper. They're very small. So you are not, you can't stand there and look out over your lawn and tell if you have chinch bugs. Even I can't do that. You have to use a microscope. And with diseases, you have to use a microscope or look a little bit deeper to figure out what your problem is and how to fix it. And I can tell you from experience, the solution is normally not fertilizing more. So that's the good news I got. Next slide. So to wrap it up, hit or advice number one, mow your grass high. You can avoid a lot of problems mowing your grass high. Summer rain should provide all the water your lawn needs. We do get some occasional weird dry periods in the summer. So you may have to go out there and manually turn on your system on your data water. But a lot of times you can switch it off now and you're not gonna have to switch it back on to run on a regular basis till October or later. 
Don't assume that your lawn problems are either a water or fertilizer issue. I can tell you from experience nine times out of 10, that's not the problem. That's what people look at first, but normally your problem is not gonna be a lack of fertilizer. Think about getting a soil test done. That kind of gives you a good baseline and helps to eliminate a couple of different potential problems that you may have. Uh, you can bring in a, what we recommend, if you dig up a one square foot section of your turf grass and bring it in, we're more than happy to look at it and help you figure out what is wrong with it. Don't bring a lot of the soil in with it. We can't tell anything from the soil. So shake the dirt off, bring in the grass, and we'll look at it for free. Uh, you can apply those summer-friendly products. Like I said, if you've never put down compost, especially on a St. Augustine lawn, especially in Spring Hill, or if you have a very sandy yard, it makes a big difference. It's something that you probably really want to try. And of course, consider a freedom lawn and or a lawn reduction. I don't have to worry about my lawn a whole lot other than cutting it, which a lot of times kind of keeps my hands full as it is when it starts growing like it is now. Next slide. Well, I wanted um, also to mention when you're talking about cutting it and you said you do it, you know, fairly often, but you keep it high. You mm -hmm. When we're talking about mowing it, um, you really don't want to remove more than a third of the blade at a time, if possible. Just like pruning any plant, that's the rule for any plant, and pruning each of those blades is the same way. And I was looking while you were talking at this background I put here. So that I just noticed me, that also. <laughs> that just reminded me, your blades are important. Your lawnmower blades are important for your grass blades. These blades look like they have been torn up. And so you want to have a very sharp lawn mower blade so that they cut, they don't tear. And that also helps um, your goal towards a healthier lawn. These torn up blades are, you know, potential uh, sources for disease and other problems. Yes. And if you look very closely at that picture, you can see some of the blades are really, really jagged. Mm -hmm. If that happens, it's a really good way for diseases to get into your grass. And if you do that with St. Augustine grass, you will end up with the um, uh, leaf spot disease during the summer that puts spots on the blades. That The main reason or culprit behind that is dull lawnmower blades. So make sure you have sharp blades. And if you have a service, make sure they have sharp blades. Yes, and if you have Bahia grass, which this isn't here, but if you have Bahia, Bahia is a very tough grass. Yes, um, it will dull your blades very quickly. Right, so you especially need to keep that blade sharp probably every other mowing. Keep it nice and sharp. Okay, well, thank you, Dr. Lester, for all of your expertise. <laughs> um, hopefully it'll guide some people into understanding these new rules um, aren't going to destroy their lawns. Uh, <laughs> what they are going to do is help protect Florida. And, you know, you want to live here, you want it to be a pleasant place for everyone. We, we want the economy to keep rolling. We have to have we have to have beautiful, pristine springs. We have to have water, you know, <laughs> so we want to protect our water. That's what this all boils down to. So we do have um, an upcoming class. Our next virtual Zoom class will be on July 5th. Florida Friendly Landscaping is 30 years old this year. So the um, in Gainesville at the university, they've been celebrating that. And you can go online and pledge to go Florida friendly. And I'm just going to go over in a class form what that means, what it means to pledge to go Florida friendly. We'll go over some simple things that you can incorporate in your life through each principle. You know, that if you pledge to do a few of those things, that we can all go Florida friendly and we all can have, you know, a very pleasant place to live in. Here is, um, again, the information for the Hernando County Extension Office, where Dr. Lester 
um, operates out of. This is where you will find Master Gardener Bernie on Thursdays. Bring in those grass samples. Go in, ask for a soil test kit. They don't do the testing there, so don't bring your soil in. You just go by and ask for the kit, and you'll get a little bag, as he mentioned, a little paper bag and a form. Then you will add your soil. It's like a um, mixture of little pieces all over your yard and fill out the form and mail it to the University of Florida. What happens next is you'll get mailed back to you or emailed back to you a copy of your test results. Dr. Lester is also going to get emailed a, that same copy. So you can call and ask him or Bernie. Bernie loves to go over soil tests. It's one of his favorite things to do to explain to you exactly what they're telling you and what your lawn might need. Phone number is there as well. You will probably either get Teresa or Mary um, who answers that and they are extremely helpful people. That's 352-754-4433. We are both on Facebook, so follow the Hernando FFL program as well as the Hernando EXT for extension Facebook page. If you go to Hernando County, well, go to YouTube. Just go to YouTube. That's the easiest way to do it. Do a search for Hernando County government. You will find my playlist, which I think this, when it gets added, will be the 114th uh, video on there. Dr. Lester has 20 some videos on there. Of course, he's on probably half of mine too. Yeah, yeah. So there is more information about lawns. There's more information about fertilizing. There's more information about Florida friendly landscaping and attracting wildlife and pollinators and saving water and all, you know, just any of those nine uh, principles, all sorts of great information. Vegetable gardening and things would be on uh, Dr. Lester's uh, playlist. So you can get lost down that rabbit hole and learn <laughs> a whole lot of stuff. Here are some resources from which you can find out more information about um, fertilizers, I, um, some University of Florida publications. Um, a gardening in a minute is a, uh, a real short, um, you know, uh, internet video. This, this video, uh, Fertilizer Follies, it has the information from the previous ordinance. So it's not necessarily up to date on that, but there is two of the world's worst actors in this uh, particular video. And you will find out good information about fertilizing. And also we have done a fertilizer um, program before in more depth, healthy lawns start from the ground up. So check out those resources to continue um, to learn more. Here again are our emails. So um, I'm Hernando County FFL at hernandocounty.us. And Dr. Lester is W. Lester, W-L-E-S-T-E-R at ufl.edu. Thank you very much, Bill, for guiding us um, in what we can do and, you know, knowing that the world's not going to end with these <laughs> new fertilizers or ordinances. And I do think it's a great opportunity, especially um, for those commercial businesses to start really start promoting some of those um compost products yeah. yes I, I really can't recommend them enough they're great yes. and that one we mentioned was a brand name command with one m um and it is a brand name of a product that you know is made in uh lake panasofsky i believe here in florida I and, think so. and some of our um local uh local uh, landscaping companies do already offer that product. So I would ask them, you know, ask your company, do you offer a compost product to add to my lawn? It is fantastic to add before you put the sod down, as Dr. Lester said, but it's also a good idea to top dress it just like fertilizer, mm -hmm. um, you know, with, you know, once or twice a year on your lawn, it will make a big difference. He mentioned uh, black cow or other type of composted manure. We don't want you adding raw manure <laughs> to your lawn because yeah, yeah, 
that'll burn your lawn. It's very heavy in nitrogen and that's just not, your neighbors won't be pleased with you either. But composted, composted mushrooms, there's all kinds of great ideas out there. And I think it's a great opportunity for commercial people to say, hey, I'm the first to offer this. So thank you again, Dr. Lester. And thank oh, you. Thank you. thank you to everyone watching. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Thank you and have a wonderful Florida friendly week.